And we'll get to all of that shortly, but first tonight we want to focus on our big story. Imagine catching COVID-19 and then beating it, but then months later you're still experiencing these daily side effects. I mean, we're talking about things like splitting headaches, memory problems, even worse. This is the hidden side of this coronavirus that we don't talk about as often. So for tonight's big story, an Indiana mom hoping for relief shares her story with you. Doctors weigh in on the search for a solution, and we're looking at the number of Hoosiers facing a similar situation. I started just not feeling right, and I couldn't really describe it. It almost felt, I, uh, I described it to my husband and my mom, it's like almost like a sense of doom, um, which sounds so dramatic, but that's kind of the way that it felt. Amanda Wood shared with me over Zoom that she hasn't felt well for months. She was diagnosed with COVID-19 back in March. And despite repeated testing, she did not get a negative test result for 117 days. Now she has three negative results, but she has developed a stutter. She has intense headaches and short-term recall issues. Um, when I had COVID in March, I, I, everything hurt. Um, and I don't feel like that anymore, so that's a blessing. Um, but the neurological issues, you know, are obviously concerning. It's also emotionally draining, especially when she hears claims that the coronavirus is really all a hoax. I wish they would have just taken a walk in my shoes since March 14th. I've been quarantined twice. I've been away from my family. I've had four hospital stays. This is real. And this takes people, this takes moms away from kids. And it takes, um, grandparents away from grandkids and moms away from their kids. I mean, I've missed um, my, my husband. I just saw him drive away. I'm sitting in my office. And I just saw him drive away from my, our five-year-old's um, open house at school and I can't go. Um, and it was late at night on the... While at home, Amanda is busy researching her options, meeting virtually with doctors at Johns Hopkins, hoping to enroll there in a global study of neurological issues in post-COVID patients. She's also getting recent MRI images of her brain and CT scans of her lungs as doctors aim to figure out what's going on. Amanda was on oxygen for the last three months, but now she's using a nebulizer and an inhaler for her shortness of breath. It's hard, but she remains hopeful. I don't know what the future holds for me. And I, I don't know if they can fix me. Um, I don't know if, um, you know, what my career looks like. I don't know what my family looks like in the future. Uh, as far as, um, you know, I, I've asked the girls, are they embarrassed by me? You know, do they not want me around their friends because of, uh, of the stuttering? And because of, you know, just, they can tell I'm not all there right now. Um, it's just, it's just hard. And she's not giving up. Right now, she's at the Johns Hopkins facility in Maryland looking for answers. Kind of going into it, just expecting nothing and hoping for everything. <laughs> Amanda shared that she's relying on her faith, her doctor's expertise. She has to get well. She knows her family needs her. I'm literally living day by day, trying to get me to where someone, to a facility that I think may be able to give me my life back. But I'm just asking everyone to please, um, you know, pray for us during this time. And um, at this point, I'm praying for a miracle. Oh, this is such a tough experience for her to go through. And what is next for Amanda? You know, it really is, Scott. And she told me that today when she was on the East Coast, they drained off some excess fluid off her brain. And they're hoping that she doesn't need to get a brain shunt. And, you know, keep in mind, she's just one case. I talked to a doctor at Johns Hopkins to get his insight. And he's told me, you know, unfortunately, there isn't a proven therapy for these neurological side effects. So how rare are these effects on the brain for patients fighting COVID-19? 
Well, you know, Scott, these neurological impact really not that rare in the severe cases. Dr. Stevens told me in his experience, he sees about 50 to 70 percent of people that have serious cases of COVID-19 suffer from a change in their brain function or a state of confusion. So their really big effort right now for the researchers is to find out if these long-term complications are specific to COVID-19 and how much of it instead could be the result of being extremely sick and being a patient who survived being in the ICU. Let me show you how many patients like Amanda went to the ICU from COVID-19. Right now, about one fifth of Hoosiers who go to the hospital with coronavirus end up in intensive care. The average stay is about 18 days. Now, most of the patients filled the ICU in the early days of the pandemic. We peaked in early April with about 850 people in the ICU. Then we dipped in early July and went back up again. But the numbers have been dropping since the beginning of August. As of last night, we had 248 people in intensive care. Here's a look at the overall number of infections across Indiana. These columns that you see right here show the new COVID-19 cases diagnosed over the last five weeks. Now, as you can see, we did see a spike a couple of weeks ago with 6,700 new cases in just seven days. But here's the good news. We have seen numbers drop since then. And that wraps up tonight's big story.